Hello everybody and welcome to my review of the 2005 live action remake of King Kong directed by Peter Jackson released in 2005 so King Kong with the release of Kong Skull Island approaching very soon I thought it best to go back and review this movie uh, I'm afraid I don't have any access to the original 1933 movie or the 70s one. So, King Kong. Basically, the story is, it centers around this movie director named Carl Denham. He is um, screening some test footage from his upcoming film. And the investors are not, they're not on board with it. They feel like he's wasted their money and they're prepared to just scrap the project and just sell the stock footage that he's got. Um, but Carl, out of complete desperation, decides to basically go ahead with the movie anyway, and um, although he doesn't have a leading lady, then he stumbles across Anne Darrow, played by um, Naomi Watts. She is a theatre actress, and her and her cast, they get made redundant, the theatre closes, um, and she's basically out of work. And it's set during the Great Depression, which is obviously a difficult time, and then Carl stumbles upon her and asks, and basically begs her to be in his film, to which she agrees on the proviso that Jack Driscoll is the writer, which of course he is. He basically says, oh, Jack Driscoll doesn't want anybody in this picture. Um, so she comes aboard reluctantly. Um, and also the writer, Jack Driscoll, who wasn't initially going to come aboard, has only written a few pages of the script. And Carl Denham's desperate, so he press gangs him onto the venture which is the name of the boat and they're about to go and shoot um on this island known as skull island um which is where the beast kong lives and it goes on from there it, it um and gets captured by the natives and offered up to kong then the then jack demands a rescue mission with the crew of the ship um, and carl denham as well who comes along to film some stuff they go to rescue her and then she discovers that this beast is actually not really a beast. He's a very lonely soul. And it, it really focuses on their relationship. And then they capture the beast and bring him back to New York to basically show him off as the eighth wonder of the world. And it goes on, it goes on from there, really. Um, that's pretty much the plot of King Kong. So, Peter Jackson's King Kong... I fucking love this movie. This is a fantastic film. Wow. It's a great, great movie. I mean, I am a bit of a Peter Jackson fanboy, I'm not going to lie. He is my favourite director. So it was, it was no surprise that I was going to love this. I mean, I, I did see it at the cinema. Um, but at the time, I didn't realise it was actually directed by Peter Jackson. But um, uh, over the years, I realised that, of course. Um, it's fantastic. It really is. I mean... What's great about this movie is that, whilst, yes, it's a great, fun, romping, epic adventure, um, it has a soul. It has a heart. And Peter Jackson doesn't forget that. He he comes from a horror background, and in some of his earlier low-budget work, he's a he's a horror filmmaker. Um, and he kind of... It's kind of going back to all that. Sorry, I just got a message there. Um, he's kind of going... He's kind of going back to, to all of that, with all of the creatures and all of the horrific moments like that so so that's really cool and um but he also he also has a great sense of you know story and character which is great he, you know just probably why the film is so long is because he likes to focus on the characters and the journey of each character so that's great and i really like the story of this movie the story has always really engaged me um as a somebody who wants to go into this kind of thing filmmaking is uh interesting to see um how they were doing it back in the 30s. Um, with Carl Denham and his, like, 30 mil camera, you know, when he's twisting it, when he's turning it, to um, to make sure that uh, <laughs> it's all working. Um, so that's interesting. I mean, and the characters are great in this movie. I mean, the cast do a fantastic job. Naomi Watts plays Anne Darrow, um, who's, like, the lead, the lead female character. She is really good. She gives a very emotional performance. Her characters are very vulnerable young girl she doesn't really she, she's kind of suffering under the fact that she's out of work and she needs to um you know she, she needs to find a job and then she completely changes she realizes how much of a bastard carl denham really is because when he tries to capture kong 
I mean, she starts to care for this beast. She starts to see, you know, he's not actually the monster that people make him out to be. He's just lonely. He's just somebody who's lonely. He needs a companion. It's not a romantic... I mean, the relationship she has with the beast is not romantic for one second. Do not be misled by that. A lot of people are misled into that, I think. Um, she's in love with Jack Driscoll. Otherwise, why would they have had that bit at the beginning when she kissed him? You know, um, she cares for Kong like... You know, you know, just like a friend, like a companion, like a best friend. So, you know, don't don't think it's romantic. You know, she tries to, you know, you know she, she shows him, she really cuts into his soul really deep. And I like that. Those are some of the best moments of the movie. Like, there's a scene between the two of them where they're just looking at the sunset and she says, beautiful. Like, it's beautiful, isn't it? Like, or something like that. And his, you know, his reactions are great too. Um, but she gives a really good performance, and especially during the climax of this movie, um, she gives a really emotional performance. Um, yeah. Also, um, it's worthy to talk about Jack Black in this movie. Jack Black um, is a surprisingly bizarre casting choice for Carl Denham, but I actually really like him in this movie. A lot of people don't like him, but I actually think Jack Black is really good in this movie. He's um, he's not he's not doing comedy for once, so he's reined himself in. And I and I think he he plays Carl Denham basically the way it should be played as well a prick. <laughs> Carl Denham he's basically a prick who wants to make his film and he he won't say no to any to anyone who tries to stand in his way even if it's the investors even if it's the captain even if it's Anne Darrow herself you know he will do anything he can to make money and make his film and you know Jack Black does a great job. There's a moment obviously when when they're in the insect pit and then he 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 sees his broken camera he's like it's all lost and then he just kicks the crap out of the insects because he's so angry and then he he and then he obviously brings kong back to new york um and that's the whole irony of this story is that the fact that it's called king kong um you know it's it kind of shows that you know kong's the good guy in this story and the 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 irony of it is that the the humans are the villains or at least jack black's character is the villain uh carl denham um you have adrian brody who plays jack driscoll who's the romantic lead uh, the playwright um he has some good chemistry with naomi watts though they don't really have many scenes together um but still they have a nice chemistry and they their romance is well brief because obviously they have to get on with the story so um it's nice to see the, see that fluctuate and adrian brody's character jack he really does become a hero by the end he really I mean, there's a moment towards the end of the movie. He's watching his own play, and um, he's thinking about him and Anne when he wrote her the play because he, he wrote her this play, and then he decides to go and tell her how he feels. And you know, by the end, he's really trying to fight to get to the Empire State Building, and really, and he's the one who leads the rescue mission. So he's he's very assertive. I really like Jack Driscoll in this movie. His character's fantastic. Um, you got loads of other characters. Um, the next person to talk about is Andy Serkis. Andy Serkis as Kong. Fantastic! You know, people say motion capture is not a form of acting. I say bullshit. I say this is so a form of acting. If you didn't believe it with Gollum in Lord of the Rings, surely you've got to believe it here. The reactions from Kong in this movie are priceless. I mean, look at this. There's a scene when he, um, when Anne has to entertain Kong, and he's laughing like, oh, 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 like, like, like that. He's laughing like that. It's absolutely brilliant. You know, you wouldn't get that in in the original films. Like the technology is brilliant. The CGI is superb for Kong, and it's Andy Serkis actually doing that. He deserves the Oscar. I don't care what the arguments are. He needs an Oscar now. Like surely, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. He's got to get an Oscar. Surely, surely. He's been doing this too long to not get an Oscar. Um, and his performance is really, really fantastic. I mean. He's also giving a very emotional performance. Um, he's just a lonely guy. Like that's the whole idea they play off is that Kong isn't a bad person. He's not. He's not this big monster. I mean, he looks like a monster, but he's basically lonely, and that's the very uh, great thing that they deal with. And the fact that he really develops a nice relationship with Anne, and they develop a strong bond, not in the romantic sense of the word, but. He cares for her and she cares for him very deeply. She understands him. She's like he just he just he just wants to be nurtured. He doesn't want to be, you know, he he doesn't he doesn't want to be 
beaten up or tortured. He just wants to be nurtured. And that's a very strong idea. And there's some. There's also another lovely scene with them in New York when um, the streets go quiet and she emerges. And then uh, the music for that scene is beautiful. Um, it's, I mean, it's when they go ice skating, which which the physics of that scene are a problem, but the, the emotion of the scene is great. Um, they just spend time together and they, they love each other's company. You know, she really, she really understands him. So I like that very much. And uh, it's heartbreaking in the climax of this movie when Kong does die. It's very sad to see him go. Very sad to see him die. Um, but he went out with a lot of dignity and he went out um, obviously on that line, it was beauty killed the beast. So, yeah, it's a, it's a very powerful, powerful moment there. Um, the other supporting characters are very good as well. You've got Thomas Kretschmann who plays the captain, um, Engelhorn. He's very good. Um, he kind of, he kind of, again, falls under the manipulation of, um, Carl Denham. He's like, oh, we could still come out of this, okay? We can trap the ape and bring it back. He says, I heard you were the best live animal capture. And, um, it's it's interesting. Um, he's he's very sort of torn about what he should do because he's meant he's not really meant to be taking them to Skull Island. He's been ordered to divert to Rangoon and because there's an arrest warrant for Carl Denham, but somehow they managed to come out of it quite well, <laughs> considering. Um, but he's very good. Um, you also have Hayes and Jimmy. Hayes um, and Jimmy. That, that's it's an interesting relationship. Uh, sort of a father son dynamic they're not actually father and son but he kind of cares for him like a father uh, jimmy was a stowaway on board the ship um it's a nice relationship but ultimately if you cut it out of the film it didn't it wouldn't have affected the film differently i mean it helps you care about the two characters um but i don't feel that there's any resolution with it as hayes dies because hayes dies uh it doesn't really feel like it doesn't really feel conclusive um, I mean, obviously it's sad for Jimmy and it encourages Jimmy to be braver, um, but it doesn't really go anywhere. So maybe they could have cut that out. Um, who else is there? You've got Preston, who's Carl's assistant. He's good. Lumpy the Cook, who's also played by Andy Serkis. He has a pretty horrific death. Um, yeah, I mean, those are pretty much the, uh, the main sort of set of characters. Um... The visual effects and CGI are absolutely astounding. I mean, not just the motion capture on Kong, but all of the creatures as well, like the dinosaurs, the insects, um, everything, and even the environments are great. I mean, I think there are there are some some green screenshots which look a little bit dated by this point, but not too bad. I mean, also it's very good to note the production design of this movie. The sets are fantastic. Especially the New York sets as well, like because they begin the film in New York, um, and on the ship as well. Those, all of those um, sets are fantastic. The production design is astounding. So whoever did the production design, actually, whose name is on the back? Production design, do, 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 uh, Grant Major, who also did Lord of the Rings. That's funny. Most of the same people who worked on Lord of the Rings worked on this movie. Obviously, as Peter Jackson directed those those movies. So. Yeah, um, the movie's written really well. I really like the script of this movie. Um, it's really good. And um, yes, the movie is very long. Uh, it's three hours long, which is a, which is quite a stretch. Um, arguably, there is, yes, some, some major padding to this movie. Um, but for me, there was enough going on with the human characters that it didn't bother me. I mean, yes, you could have cut... Maybe the first 20 minutes could have been shortened a little bit when they were actually in New York. But I thought most of what they had was all character development. Also, another character I forgot to mention was Bruce Baxter, played by Kyle Chandler. He's a really good character. He's um, he's basically this actor who's... He's basically a coward. Um, and he kind of just doesn't really care about anybody else but himself. He's a, very, he's a narcissist. He loves himself. Although he does do a very noble act and kind of... He, he basically um, provides a rescue mission when they're in the insect pit. He... He gets the crew to rescue them, um, so that's good. Um, but but I mean, but he he doesn't really change that much. Um, but he is a good person. But again, he's just a bit of a coward. So, but he's a funny character, and there's some good tension between him and Jack, which is nice. Um, okay, yes, the movie's yeah, like I said, the movie's very long. Uh, it takes a while for Kong to actually appear in this movie. 
But I didn't actually mind that. I thought everything that happened in the first hour was still entertaining enough. Um, although there is some scary stuff in this movie. It's really scary. I mean, all the stuff with the natives, um, when you first see them, and when they attack people and they kill Mike, the sound guy, and then they offer Anne up to Kong, all of that stuff is really scary. Um, so this, I'm surprised this film didn't get a 15, but... It's like top of the borderline 12, like any more, and it would have been a 15. Because um, I remember seeing this movie when I was younger in the cinema. I was only about eight years old at the time. And it was like, okay, it was really quite freaky. Um, but Peter Jackson did a great job with them, horror, with, with the horror elements here. Um, and it's particularly scary also um, in the insect pit. I had to mention the action of this movie is, t is terrific. The action is awesome. Um, there's a there's a great stampede scene um, as well. I mean, again, some dated green screen effects, but it can't be helped. Um, there's a great um, fight in the insect pit, which I think is awesome. Just great when they're all like, when people have died and they're all just like, God, like just you know, trying to fight all of the enemies. It's just just great. You have also what I like to call the three Rex fight uh, when Kong is um, holding. And in one hand, and in fighting three T Rexes in the other hand, so uh, that's awesome. Uh, all all the, the climax in New York is great as well, and then the, the Empire State Building is just fantastic, and it's it's so emotional and epic, in, and you you feel like you're gonna cry. It's it's really really heartfelt. Um, there's also a good scene with the ship as well when they're trying to escape as well, but then they have to go back for Anne as well. Um, the movie is epic. I mean, it is just epic. It's ambitious. I mean, Peter Jackson, since Lord of the Rings, has always gone for very ambitious projects, and he's very good at it. <laughs> he's good at juggling it. Um, his direction is absolutely brilliant here. Um, he, he keeps the film moving. I mean, it is long, but he manages to keep the film engaging and entertaining and exciting. And also, you care about the characters. You care about the human characters and Kong as well. Um... Obviously, Kong being the, the sort of the title character and the one with the most heart, really. Um, but it all boils down to that relationship between Kong and Anne, and that is what grounds the movie. And I, I, I think one of the most powerful scenes in this movie as well is when Kong is captured by the humans, um, by Carl Denham, and when he throws the chloroform on, onto him, the music flaring up as well, and... You can see in Anne's face, she's she's horrified. She's she's grown to love this creature, like a bit like she she's like no, he's my best friend. You know you can't do this to me. I mean, and it's it's heartbreaking to see. I mean, her reactions are absolutely you know flawless. You know, acting is just flawless here. Um, wow, you know just just wow. It's 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 fantastic. Um, what was I going to say? <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of which, the um, the music uh, by James Newton Howard is amazing. The soundtrack captures every single piece of emotion that you could hope for. And it's epic as well. It's just epic. Um, it's just wonderful. I also love the opening to this movie. The fact that um, it starts out in the Great Depression and we really see the struggle of people in New York. I think, I know it's not, that's not really what the film's about, but it's nice that the film that they chose to... Sorry about that. I had some um, technical problems there. Um, but I, I know that it's not really... The film's not really about the Great Depression in the 1930s, but I thought, you know what? If it helps set up the characters, then I'm all for it because you really see the struggle of the characters. You see the struggle of Anne and, you know, you know, Jack and Carl. And, you know, you see, you see, the, you see how the Great Depression has affected people in New York. And it, it's a very important moment in our history. And, I, again, it, the film isn't about this, but it's just a great way to set up the characters and their struggle. And the fact that there's literally no money, times are tough. Um, and I think it's great attention to detail. And it helps the audience immediately emotionally engage with this story. So that's that's absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah. So if I have any criticisms in the movie, yes, maybe it could be argued that it is too long and... You could lose some of some of it. Some of the first hour is a little bit padding. It's a little bit slow, but I mean, I enjoyed it for what it was because it was setting up all the characters and and everything. Um, 
but it did take its time. It did really, really take its time. So it's not everybody is gonna, not everybody will like that. Um, I didn't mind it. I mean, I was just, I was enjoying the characters, but you probably could lose some of it. It does feel like a director's cut. And actually, to say that the film did actually get a director's cut, where they added 13 minutes, that's not necessary. That's just overkill. I mean, I watched the director's cut a while ago, um, and all the added scenes, there were a couple of added action sequences, and there's a couple of small moments that they added, but really nothing that really contributes to the story. So I would say just watch the theatrical version. It's long enough anyway. It's long enough. <laughs> it's already three hours long. Doesn't need to be any longer. Um, say so the visual effects are terrific. Um, all the horror moments superb i mean the yuck factor is really up there especially with the um insect pit scene the characters are really well developed um the movie's emotionally satisfying in every area it's heartfelt it's epic it's intense the soundtrack is awesome i can't really fault this movie very much other than maybe that it's a little too long in in places um the acting is terrific too and that final line of the movie it was beauty killed the beast um just superb and they make kong a character they make kong a fully well developed character in this movie and you know he's brilliant in this movie andy circus really should be should have got an oscar for this um it's probably not the best film peter jackson's directed i still think that the lord of the rings trilogy is 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 probably a league a few leagues above this but he puts so much into this and peter jackson's direction is just brilliant it's just fantastic he knew how to approach it he had a big vision for it and it worked um and the writing is again great um i mean yes it you, by, by the end you go yes it's been a long ride but you feel like that was a very satisfying experience so i'm gonna give king kong the 2005 one a 10 out of 10 Yeah, despite the minor niggle about the the pacing and the um, the um, running time, it, it is still worthy of a ten. I just think the natives are very scary, and the scene where they have to go and rescue her from the natives is interesting. I mean, the natives are the, probably the scariest things in the movie for me. A lot of people can't look at the insect scene, but I <laughs> I say otherwise. I say it's the um, it's the natives that scare me the most. So, yeah, that's it. That's my review of King Kong 2005. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Put your comments down below. Let me know. Tune in when I review Kong Skull Island. Until then, guys, thank you all for watching. And as always, I am Mr. Tardis 11. See ya.